Carrington Show. Sponsored by Created Equal. Mark is training a new generation of leaders to take on the culture of death and win. If you don't like abortion, don't have one. The only thing that can be said to be objective truth is that there is no objective truth. It does come out in one piece. It comes out in one piece. I would argue that we certainly are not all created equal. And now, here's Mark. Well, by now, you've probably heard of the movie Unplanned. That is the story of Abby Johnson leaving Planned Parenthood. If you haven't seen that movie, you need to go see it, because I think it's still in the studios. So we've heard of the movie Unplanned. Well, I want to make a new movie called Unhinged. And that is what the political left is behaving like right now on college campuses and other places across America. You're listening to your radio act with Mark Harrington here on the Mark Harrington Show. And today we're going to be talking about unhinged, the rise of pro-choice extremism all across America. And I have in studio my good friend and colleague, Austin Beigel, who's going to be uh, sharing some of his experiences on college campuses and this whole idea of pro-abortion violence, vandalism, larceny, theft. I mean, all all the unlawful acts that we're seeing all across America. Uh, Austin's been uh, involved, not on the perpetrating side, obviously, but on the side of being this being perpetrated against him, the receiving side of some of that, and we'll get his perspective on what's going on across America. So we want to talk about that. And of course, this is in the context of this uh, homosexual state representative from Pennsylvania who this week filmed himself, uh, you know, harassing a woman, a a, a lady uh, peacefully sidewalk counseling out front of a Planned Parenthood in Philadelphia. And this video has gone viral and there's going to be a protest out front of the Planned Parenthood uh, this weekend. And so, you know, all of this kind of fits into the context of that and other things are going across, are going on across the country. And we'll talk about Brian Sims in a minute. He's the state rep from, from Pennsylvania. But before we do, I just want to talk about this recent attack that we had here at the University of North Carolina. And the bottom line is this, pro-life free speech rights are under attack across the country on college campuses. Now, if you don't believe me, just go to our YouTube page. You can watch the videos of our equipment being trashed, spray painted, vandalized, stolen, all this kind of stuff. And then our people, our, our volunteers and others actually being attacked. This week, we released a video of footage, footage from North Carolina, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, where my good friend and colleague here, Austin Beigel, was attacked by a pro-abortion student. Uh, and what we want to do is let's play this video first, and then we'll, we'll kind of get an idea of what that was like for Austin to be on the campus of the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. So Mr. Producer, if you would go ahead and play the video. This again was at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. It's gonna come down in buckets. Yep. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Ma'am, don't do that. Please. Please. You're a terrible person. Stop. Please. You're a terrible Stop. person. Stop. Ma'am. Ma'am, stop that. You're a terrible stop. person. Stop. You just, you, you just, call the cops. This is not okay. Can you call the cops? You just this is not this. okay. Ma'am, calm down. There's this no is reason. not okay. Shut the f up right now. Hi, I'm at the this pit. There's a woman that just punched my friend uh, four or five times. She assaulted him. You're not him. an innocent human being. You're a terrible person. Ma'am, please stay on site. You assaulted him. It's You can't actually leave. Sir? Hi. Um, I'm Sam. We're going to be out with color. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, so this young lady here, um, my friend Austin over there, she came up and she said, are these signs you? And then he said yes, and then she just started punching him in the face um, three or four times, uh, and then in the stomach. Do we know what's going to happen today? Will she be arrested or...? That's what, uh, so, what we're discussing. Um, what we're going to do, since it is a misdemeanor, um, instead of 
putting her handcuffs, dragging her off, all that good stuff, we're gonna we're gonna cite her, which is the same thing as an arrest. It's an arrest by citation, mm -hmm. um, which means she'll still have to go to court. She'll still have to do all that. She's still being charged with the crime. Okay, she's just not being put in hand. Just so you know mm -hmm. that we're not putting her in hand, but she is getting charged with the crime. Mm -hmm. um, all right, you can stop it there. Arrested. We can stop it right there. So. Basically, you heard that and you saw that if you're watching on social media, the attack of Austin Bible University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Student comes up, says, you know, who put these signs up? You said we did. And then she swang at you. Um, what I felt was, you know, obviously the attack was bad enough. But I wanted to talk about something else. And that is the, the police officers themselves when they came and we're dealing with this woman. Her name is J Jillian Ward. We're gonna talk about her in a second. And what, what did they say when you were talking to the police and trying to get this woman, because we, we obviously, we, 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 we file charges against people. If they, if they attack our signs, destroy our signs, threaten, assault us, whatever, we ch press charges because it's important that we teach these students a lesson. But when the police came to you and talked to you about it, what, what did they say to you guys? Yeah, well, they were telling me if I would have done the same exact action to her, they would have charged me with a felony. But they only gave her a misdemeanor for non-aggravated assault. Um, but if it's a man hitting a woman, they call it a felony. But, you know, she hits me pretty hard. And I can tell you, if she could have hit me harder, she would have. You know, and, and for her just to get a misdemeanor and, you know, they didn't put her in handcuffs. They just gave her an arrest by citation which was up to officer discretion. They, they could have they could have could handcuffed have, her. Yeah, they could have taken her away right there if they wanted, but they chose not to make a huge deal out of it. Um, there's a result. Well, you know, it makes me wonder. I mean, this was a, a decision of the law enforcement officer on the spot. I don't think there's a law that says you're going to not, you know, handcuff women versus handcuffing men. I don't mm -hmm. think that's the law. But for some reason, this law, this this police officer felt like it would be a bad idea to handcuff her and arrest her. Why do you think that is? In the reverse, being differently, in other in other words, if you would have swung at a pro-abortion female, think about that. How would you have been treated? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty probably I'd have been dragged <laughs> dragged out of that place. But you have to realize we're we're right outside the student center at the University of North Carolina. Right. And so there's there's a lot of people that you don't necessarily see in the video, but there's people all around watching this happen. So, you know, dozens of people saw her come at me, punch me in the face, hit me a few times. Um, and then they they don't see any like punishment for her. They don't see punishment for that action. She didn't get put in handcuffs. Right. You know, she was just standing over with So why do you friends. think that police officer chose not to other than she's a woman? Yeah, which um, may be enough in today's world, right? Sure. Yeah, I, I don't know. If well, you, of course, we don't really know she's a woman, though, anymore, well, <laughs> do we? At least <laughs> she may not nice. identify as one. Sure. So, do you think that was the reason mainly, or just didn't want the embarrassment to come against her, or whatever? Yeah, I think they they kind of just wanted to uh, brush the whole thing under the rug, not make a huge deal about it. Um, you know, watching her get arrested. You know, I, I can't say they were sympathetic towards her or anything. Uh, but they, they chose not to. It was up to their discretion. They didn't want to make a scene in the middle where all these people were watching. Right. Which is everyone saw it happen. Of course, this is in, unfortunate, folks. We obviously we want to press charges. We want justice. We want the woman to, you know, uh, if, if if signs are damaged, we get them. Uh, we get the money for them and that kind of thing. Uh, so, but we are at the mercy, so to speak, of the police and law enforcement, and also the prosecutors. And right now. She's been charged with non-aggravated assault. Uh, and so we'll be following that uh, as time goes on. Uh, I wanted to make a broader point here, and this is something we discussed this morning, and that is that we're not just seeing, this, this woman was likely post-abortive, likely, although it's impossible to know. Um, and she might've been reacting out of that. But I think what we're seeing more, more and often, and that is, that there's kind of a, a theme, and that is a lot of the attacks that we've seen over the last several months and even years are not just individual pro-choice, pro-abortion students who might have been participated in abortion and are angry and act out. What we're seeing is a kind of a, a um, I don't know if you want to call it a theme, of social justice warriors. These aren't just your common everyday student who's just upset that we're on campus. These are people that I think are being groomed 
to be writers, politicians, leaders in the social justice uh, cause, if you will. And we found that Jillian Ward, for example, when we looked into her uh, background, she writes for this uh, online publication called Odyssey about social justice causes, social justice causes. We had Thomas Medcalf, that was last fall at uh, Indiana University. He was a member of Black Lives Matter and he went around and systematically spray painted all of our signs. And he was also part of a group called Young Democrats, uh, Young Democratic Socialists. And then at the University of Texas at San Antonio, we had a, a guy named Ian Ramos. Get this. He went and destroyed our display and he was studying nonviolent social resistance. <laughs> Uh, you know, it, it goes to the issue of these are just propaganda factories right now, and they're churning out these social justice leaders, and they are the ones that are attacking us. I mean, so it's a combination. They don't all fit that, uh, that MO, if you will, but uh, many of them do nowadays, and I think it's something we need to be more concerned with. You know, one other thing, and I want to move on to this whole thing of, of Brian Sims, this, you know, this, this politician from Pennsylvania. I get comments all the time, social media, email, texting, telling me, you know, how well we're behaved, how well we, you know, control ourselves when these things happen. What is it? How are you able when someone comes up and starts swinging at you or calling you names or flipping you off? are getting really out of control and angry. How do you control yourself and not return uh, anger for anger? How do you do that? Because I think a lot of people are, are really blown away by that when they see our young people like yourself behaving as you should civilly uh, to someone who's really upset with you. How do you do that? Mm, well, yeah, it's just self-control and realizing that violence doesn't promote the discussion. And like when you look at historical movements in the past, uh, all the movements that resort to violence, they end up failing. But when we look at the great successes like Dr. King and his right. movement and and you have to realize and look at the bigger picture and realize this moment isn't just about you. You know, I got to bury my feelings. You know, I'm not happy to get punched in the face. It's not right. fun. Um, I mean, but, is there a part of you that thinks, oh, I need to respond or you just are really well trained and behaved? <laughs> sure. I mean, there's always a, a part of you that wants justice and wants the person to give you. You have the right to defend yourself, sure. obviously, but absolutely. Um, but but in that case, I didn't feel like it was necessary. Right. Um, you know, she she was lashing out, and everyone everyone saw what she was doing, and to expose her ridiculous and absurd behavior, mm -hmm. I thought was more effective. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so that's well, you know, one of the things that we train you guys in is what we call what Dr. King called nonviolent. Uh, passive resistance. And that is if you're attacked, you go into a protective mode and you do not, I mean, you have a right to defend yourself, in other words, but you don't attack them. We also do not protect equipment in that we won't take down somebody who's stealing our signs. We'll try to keep them from taking them by holding them or something like that. But we rely on law enforcement to do their job. Uh, and this is really patterned after the civil rights movement, obviously, the nonviolent passive resistance. That's our position. I think it has bode well for us over time. We are the most peaceful group of people. We are the pro-life movement. We're about peace. We're not about violence. Obviously, abortion is violence. It's the other side that's violent. The other side wants to kill babies to solve problems. Uh, and, they, and, and it goes to figure that they're going to also possibly act out violently against those who defend those babies. So this isn't a, you know, this isn't some kind of, uh, you know, big revelation that they're actually becoming violent. What we're seeing, though, is a systematic change in, in the, these social justice warriors being raised up. So let me let me do this. We're going to switch gear to this Brian Sims dude out of uh, Pennsylvania. He's a he's a piece of work. I'll tell you that. Boy, we couldn't have invented a better dude than this to make our case that uh, what's going on in America and the lack of civility beyond that harassment and intimidation is on the other side of this equation, on the pro-abortion side. But this guy's the perfect foil <laughs> in a way, uh, you know, but it, let's go ahead and play. We're going to play a couple of clips. This is Brian Sims. I mean, unless you've been living under a social media rock for a week, you wouldn't have figured this out, but this has been all over the news now. Pennsylvania State Representative Brian Sims 
white male homosexual, you know, who's anti or anti pro he's, he's, he's pro abortion, harassing a female peaceful silo counsel counselor out front of a Planned Parenthood in Philadelphia. Go ahead and play this clip. Planned Parenthood of Southeastern Pennsylvania. They have to deal with people like this every single day. They deal with people out here people every like single this. day telling mm -hmm. others what's right for their Awful bodies. People. But we're not going to let them get away with it. Absolutely not. No, She's a real don't, threat. Don't Look at her. Don't hide. You're publicly protesting women coming to a Planned Parenthood. It's something they have a right to wow. do. Don't hide from it. Don't hide from it. Have the courage of your broken convictions if this is what you're going to do. Everyone, this is what they deserve and this is what they need. Every single time any of us walk by people. something like this, we're letting them win. We're letting them think that they are right and we know better. These people have no business telling anybody else what's right for their body. They have no right. business telling people of color what they think about what they do with their families, with their own family planning. This is disgusting. This isn't Christianity. This isn't love. This isn't support. This isn't kindness. This go ahead, is the go ahead and stop it there, shame. Mr. Producer. Go ahead and stop it there. there. There's so much there. I could take. I could take an entire show and talk about what he's saying there. But here's a state representative who's a representative of the people in a representative republic, democracy, form of democracy, that supposedly believes in free speech and the First Amendment, saying that she shouldn't be allowed to do this stuff. I mean, and, and if you watch the video, and I exhort you, if you're listening by radio, go watch this video. This woman's just minding her own business. She's out there praying and walking on the sidewalk council, or on the sidewalk, waiting to talk to someone. That's it. And this guy goes off. He totally goes off on her. And uh, it just shows the double standard out there. And that is, you can be a white male in pro-abortion and be demeaning and harassing and intimidating women and that's okay. That's good. That's that's all right. But if one of you or one of us, I guess, white male were to say anything close to what was being said to that woman who was pro, let's say we're pro-life, white man said that to a pro-choice woman, uh, it would go, I mean, this would be beyond the pale, you know, it's just so much. So as a white, obviously you're a white male, right? Uh, you are, uh, you know, unashamedly, I assume. Sure. Um, how do you deal with that on college campuses when people say, oh, this is all about women, it's not about men. Of course, he's a man telling a woman what to do that day, right? She can't protest, uh, but we can't tell a woman it's a bad idea to kill a baby. Uh, how do you deal with that issue? Because I'm sure you hear it all the time, students coming up and saying, what do you have to do with this? You're a white male. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, plainly, I just tell them that's that's a sexist comment to make, that because I don't have a certain body part, I can't have a say right. about innocent human beings being killed before my eyes, right? And, and you know, that's it's not something we choose. My biological sex is... No, it's predetermined. It, it is the very definition Plus, of sexism. Right. I can't Genders have don't have arguments, right? Yeah. They just don't. And either the argument's going to rise and fall based on the logic of the argument, or it's not. It shouldn't matter who's presenting it. That's called an ad hominem logical fallacy. Okay, let's go to the next clip. Again, Brian Sims, Pennsylvania state representative and pro-life harasser, harasser of peaceful pro-life sidewalk counselors. This is the state representative. This is the guy representing the state of, uh, uh, of the district in the state of Pennsylvania. So let's go ahead and play that next clip thought that an old white lady would be out in front of a Planned Parenthood telling people what's right for their bodies. Shame on you. Shame on you for hiding your face at the same time that you're shaming other people. Again, the same laws that protect me protect you. And, and that's okay. You're allowed okay, to Okay, well, I'm glad he's okay with that. It's interesting. Old white lady. So he threw in the ageism too. The guy's not only a bigot when it comes to male, female, right? He's also a bigot when it comes to age. Not you know, not hard to understand basically because this is this is the mindset of the political left. This is the mindset of pro-abortion advocates all the time. Uh, it's okay to be a bigot if you're on the left. It's okay to be a bigot if you're in a pro a pro-abortion advocate. And so here's the deal: there's going to be a protest happening in front of this Planned Parenthood on Saturday. I, I'm sorry on Friday this week, and people that I know, Lila Rose, others, are going to be protesting out front of this Planned Parenthood. 
And I was like, well, that's okay. That's good. This is where this guy resides. But I tell you what, if you really want to get an, get this kid, this guy, uh, affect this guy, then let's go to the heart of the matter is, and he's a, he's a representative in Pennsylvania. And so I'm suggesting people call the Speaker of the House and the Minority Leader uh, of the House uh, of Representatives there in Pennsylvania and, and demand that this guy resign, okay? Demand that he resign and make a personal apology to this woman. This woman's just a quiet lady. In fact, I've been trying to get a hold of her so I could interview her and she's not interested. She just wants to stay out of the public light, which makes sense. And this guy should be demanded that he should apologize and I think he should resign. Again, if this were a white man who was pro-life, berating, harassing a pro-choice woman and he was a state representative, He'd be out of he'd be, he'd be out on the street the uh, the second that happened. They'd be calling for his head. <laughs> They'd be calling for his head. So I'm suggesting people call the speaker of the house. His name is Mike Terze and uh, Frank Dermody. He is the minority leader. If you want to go to our social sites at Mark Harrington social sites, you can find out that information and make a phone call to him. All right, got one more clip I want to play here before the end of the program. Again, this is Brian Sims going unhinged. Uh, against a peaceful pro-life sidewalk counselor in Pennsylvania. Shame, shame, shame on you. There's no faith that tells you you are right and everybody else is wrong. There's no faith that tells you it's your job to stand out here and shame people for something that they have a right to do. This is disgusting. This is wrong. This is shameful. So please, <laughs> if you're watching this, even if it's just five dollars that you can give. All right, you can end it there. You know what's shameful is is Brian Sims. He's shameful. He's saying that it's shameful that she's out there peacefully praying and sidewalk counseling out front of this abortion mill. No, he's shameful because he's shaming her for executing or at least, you know, doing doing her thing, which is exercising her First Amendment rights. So, Austin, I want to end with this. Um, you know, again, I mentioned that this idea that it's not just these random pro-abortion protesters that act out against us. We're seeing a pattern. Uh, that this this whole social justice warrior, these being raised up at universities. And this is a perfect example of one of them. Brian Sims probably went to a liberal university, like I think it was Michigan or Michigan State, I don't know where he went, got his law degree, uh, and then went into politics. <laughs> you know, these are the rising stars of the leftist pro-abortion movement. These are the Jillian Wards. You know, Jillian Ward could be in this place in five years at the State House. Thomas Medcalf from Indiana, who attacked us and, and spray painted our signs. This kid, Ara Ian Ramos from the University of Texas at San Antonio. So we're running into this more and more. As you travel the country with the road trip for life and other things, how do you think things are going out there? I mean, obviously, we have a lot of success. We had how many, how many students? changed their minds in the last uh, couple of weeks of our road trip. Yeah, we had 208 students confirm to us that they changed their mind about abortion just a couple of weeks on the road. Okay, so this is, walk me through this. Student comes up, you'll you'll find out they're pro-choice, right? Mm -hmm. And then you'll have a conversation with them and what happens? How do you how do you how do you kind of verify that? How do you know that? Yeah, well, you just you just keep pointing back to the humanity of the preborn. Um, and asking people, what do they think makes a human being valuable? Um, and you can just so easily see the inconsistencies in their arguments. And through logic, you're able to kind of explain those inconsistencies to them. And you just ask, like, do you believe in abortion anymore? Have you changed your mind? Like, yeah, I never thought about it that way. I've never seen pictures like this before. So the pictures play an important role. Oh, absolutely. What yeah. role do they play real quickly? Yeah, well, it's so clear the humanity of the preborn. They, they can't deny it when they're looking at the, the fingers and the toes and the head. Right. You can't deny that it's a human being they're looking at and they see the graphic way it's been killed. Um, and it, it really shuts them up. That's what the pictures do. It, it takes away that smoke screen. That's so we had two, 209 confirmed changed minds in three weeks. And that's really only, if you think about it, that's maybe 15 to 20 hours on a college campus. I mean, those are, those are huge numbers, folks. Think, think if we could extrapolate this and bring it across all of all, all of America, across every college campus, the paradigm shift that we could have happen if guys like Austin and other staff members like our group and, and other uh, volunteers and such could do what we're doing all across America. We could have a shift on abortion overnight if we could get it done. 
So it's not just about getting attacked, although it happens and it makes news and it's, it's something we need to address. We're out there changing minds every single day on college campuses and high school campuses around America because of people like Austin Beigel who are willing to commit their lives to defending the preborn and spreading the gospel. So folks, if you want to find out more about us, go to markharrington.org or createdequal.org to support our organization and support people like Austin Bible. God bless you. God bless America. And remember America to bless God. You've been listening to Mark Harrington, your radio activist. For more information on how to become a witness against the evil, evil plague in America, call Created Equal at 614-269-7808, 614-269-7808, or go online to createdequal.net, createdequal.net. Be sure to tune to The Mark Harrington Show next time for your marching orders in the culture war.